What's up guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is James. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so right now. And today I want to tell you the 10 things I do anytime I want to shoot a video. Let's get those credits rolling. So the first thing that I do is called keyword research. It doesn't matter how well your video is done. If you can't be able to make your video be seen in search, then you will not find anyone to view your video. The problem is that so many creators make their videos and they make them awesome content but then no one can be able to find that particular video so when that happens the issue is that you have a very good product you have a very good video but then no one ever watches your video and you're always wondering why you have zero views 10 views and nine of them are yours so there are tools that i use to make sure that whatever i am Doing a video for has an audience. So one of the tools that I use is called Keywords Everywhere. I'll place a link in the description. It's a plugin for Chrome that any time that you place a search term on Google or on YouTube, it will tell you the average amount of views or searches it has in a month. That tells you if that particular keyword is very popular. The second one that I use is called TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy has an explorer that tells you with the size of your channel if you will be able to rank for that particular keyword. So it will tell you whether you should use that keyword, whether that keyword is good or very good, whether it is fair or bad, depending on the number of searches that that, video, that search term has. It will tell you if your video will be able to rank for it. Now, my favorite keyword research tool is called Morning Fame. It picks all the qualities of keywords everywhere and TubeBuddy and then adds on to something that is called relevance. Anytime that you search for a video, the videos are ranked in terms of relevance. So I will show you how Morning Fame works while we go to step two. So the second step that we said we will cover is on morning fame. And the way morning fame works is that you put in your video idea and the title that you want. So the second step is on the title ideas. The idea here is to make sure that you get a title where you can rank a bit quickly. And with morning fame, if you get a grade of a D and above, that means that you can show up in the top 20 search results for that particular search word term. The, the, the way it works is that if people are searching for something on YouTube, they'll rarely go below position 5 or position 10. If they find whatever they're looking for in the first five videos, that's what they'll go for. So when you're actually placing your video, it may start at a lower rank, but as time goes and people keep watching your particular video, your rank will go a bit higher. So if you start at number 15 or number 20, when your video is just published, that is no problem. You will get people from other platforms to come to your video. And once they do come to your video and they watch it for a long time, then the rank will keep on going higher. So step number three is on thumbnails and thumbnails are the first visual that people get the time that they come to watch your video. You need to get a good thumbnail in order to entice people to come to your video. For instance, whenever you are searching for something, you usually look at the picture that is there, you look at the title so that you can be able to see, is this really what I want? And you will usually know from the thumbnail that is on that particular video. And the more you put a good thumbnail, the more people actually click on your video. It's called CTR, which stands for click-through rate. 
because YouTube usually recommends the stuff that is on your channel to people who are either subscribed or would be interested in the things that you're doing. So if they show it to a hundred people, those are called a hundred impressions. And if 10 people out of those click on your thumbnail, then you have a 10% click through rate. The key here is to make sure that you have a good click through rate and every single video that you do, you always keep improving the click through rate that you have for your videos. Because the more you have people come, the higher your click through rate, the higher the chances of YouTube recommending you to more people. It shows them the video and they keep clicking on it. So you want to have the highest click through rate on the ranked keywords that you search for so that any single time someone is searching for something, they will most likely be shown your video. The point is that you get people to click on your video because in the next step we'll talk about what to do next after people have clicked on your video so we are doing a plant review of her channel her channel is called all things weddings and events i'll place a link in the description so that i explain to you the next part of what you should do and the things that you should do for your channel we have already spoken about keyword research we have already spoken about titles and thumbnails and their importance the next thing is writing a summary yeah? even when even when you're doing a vlog you can have like a breakdown of what you expect to do for the vlog going to do a review of the place so what kind of things are you reviewing that place? you can be reviewing their food you can review hotel you can review the service that they have what kind of amenities they have so that now when you're doing all that you always need to know which kind of things am i going to review so that you can know what type of shots you will have so that because most of the times you'll find whatever you're doing is either a paid thing that you're doing or you are doing something else that you're going to do in a now you'll not be able to go back so all those shots should be there so when you're when you're parking and you're leaving a particular place you can have different ideas for just one visit like when you're going to a given place and it's a different temperature from the one that you have so what kind of things have you packed so that's one video on its own pack with me you're packing going to dubai or you're going to wherever it is you're going so that's one video then traveling to that particular place is another video then the actual review of that place is another video then uh, so yeah, we are in the train, so that's why there's noise, we can't. So then the most interesting things, like the top five things that you loved about a particular place, or the top five things that you hated about a particular place, that is still content. So imagine now you've done one trip and you've gotten five videos, just from one trip. And that comes from scripting it, scripting what you're going to do, then dividing your content in terms of something that is manageable so that if I'm watching your video, I'm not going to watch 90 minutes of your whole trip. I'll watch five videos of 10 minutes each or 18 minutes, whatever it is. The next thing is the actual shooting. When you're shooting, many of the times, if you have your phone, the best thing is to shoot it like this. Then the next thing is clean your lens and then look at the lens. The, the biggest disadvantage of using your phone when you're shooting is people like, I want to see myself. Yeah. But the problem is anytime you look at yourself, you're, it's like I'm talking to him. It's like I'm talking to you, but I'm looking at him. So I'll never have the conversation with you who's actually watching and you have come because so, every video is a conversation with one person. 
Yeah. So since I'm having a conversation with you, I should look at you because that's the only way we'll be able to connect. Yeah. So you shoot like this. Then even if you don't have something to stabilize your shots, which is important, and there's something that you can get when you're shooting, you place your hands near yourself so that this acts like a tripod. It holds your footage. Then when you're doing moving shots, and when you're doing moving kind of shots, you actually just move slowly by slowly moving to one side or you can do up and down kind of shots that gives someone a, a good feel of how the environment looks like because when you're doing when you're doing room reviews you're doing hotel reviews someone wants to get a feel of how that place looks so if you so if you actually just give us this view it's like a photo yeah, it, it doesn't tell me what exactly that particular place has. So, if you're doing a review of a particular place, then the the name of the place should should have some good moving shots. The entrance, a walk through the hallway, things. Those are shots that you can use. You can do voiceovers as well when you're doing all that. Yeah, yeah. So when you're doing, you can do voiceovers of the same then it's okay if you if you do voiceovers when you're actually shooting or once you have now shot you can now sit down record because your phone already has a sound recorder so you'll be at a quiet place there's nothing that's going on then you now record as you're watching your video you're you're now telling people exactly what is going on in the video then you're done with that then when you're shooting if possible get a tripod if you have a if you have a small tripod it's okay if you can afford you should get a gimbal because now with a gimbal you can be able to do good moving shots that are stabilized and if you can't get stabilized shots do it as slowly as possible yeah like bigger place, yeah. Place. Yes, the more that you can show someone in a particular place, the better because then it adds to the story. If you can get a camera, a DSLR, the better because you can change lenses, you can get higher quality, but still, a phone is enough to start. You can use YouTube money when you earn YouTube money to now buy equipment. You don't need to have all the equipment of the, you don't need a loan to start a YouTube channel. You can start with your phone. After that, it's editing. You can also edit on your phone. There's a video that Patricia Kihoro has done, which I'll place in the description below. Uh, it gives very many of the apps that she uses, but one I've really liked is called Quick, which if you're doing one take, it's very good because you can place your title, you can place a few filters, you upload. Because there's no need to even pay for software if you're starting. There's no need to crack software if you're starting. You can just start simple. At the end of the day, whatever you're doing is you need to create enough content. And the more content that you create, the more you will grow. You can't grow if you don't create content. Everyone is waiting for them to, to, for money so that you can be able to have good software to edit. There are people who started with uh, with software that even has the logo of that particular company because it's a trial there. And as a viewer, I don't really care if if there's if there's that logo there, it just means that this person is creating content. If I like you, I'll not even care that that thing is there. But as you move on, of course, you should be able to, if you have some little money, save and get a paid version because paid versions have more things that you can be able to use. And the more you keep on editing, the better you become, the faster you can edit, the more you can create. So. Anytime you edit, you edit. Remove some of the arms and ooze and 
pauses and all those things so that it moves a little faster but don't cut out everything sometimes even leaving blunders inside the video is okay because it creates some kind of comic effect that is there because some of my videos are very serious but if i put some funny thing that i did there it will make people like be like oh so he's still human yeah. so that's that's the kind of engagement that you're looking for with a with an audience yeah then the next step i have is on subtitles anytime you have a new point especially because i do education i always need to add something now if you're doing a vlog you can tell people where you are a particular place so you're always adding explanation on top of the video that you're doing subtitles also help to you the, the point is you need to keep your audience as engaged as possible so they're not watching the very same thing they were watching the whole time when you're watching tv there's always a scene change there's something that has changed so subtitles is one way the other thing you can do is even when i'm talking like this i'll have footage of something else while i'm explaining a particular point like now we are talking about subtitles i'll actually show the process of how i put my subtitles the reason the place where i put them the, the style that i use the colors that i decide on how i actually export so those things then i now add to the video so when someone is watching they're like yes they can hear what i am saying but they can also see the things that i'm actually saying so it puts in something different that someone has. and we'll do the rest of the steps later on step number eight has to do with video editing now when you're actually starting up this is not a mandatory step because video editing actually takes time it takes training it takes practice so what you can do when you're starting out is make sure that you do one good take and that's it you upload because making an upload or doing a video and then uploading is more important than all the edits that you have seen in this video so far so when you get to editing there are good programs that you can use the one i use is called premiere pro it's advanced it's a paid version they have a free version that is free for 30 days i'll place a link in the description so that you can actually go and try it out for the next 30 days if you like it then you can go on and use it if you're an imac user then there's a program that's called final cut pro which you can make use of to make your edits if you have final cut pro and if or if you have premiere pro then you're good to go there are other programs like filmora like windows movie maker like imovie all these programs can help you to edit and the easier it is to edit the better because you don't want something that you have a very big learning curve for you to go through you just need something that is simple so that you can start so that you can get your videos out in the world if you can you can also use your phone to edit I know Yami Mami actually uses her phone to do everything from the filming to editing to thumbnails. Everything is done on her phone and she uses iMovie. If you are an Android user, then a good program to use is called InShot, which I'll place a link in the description below. So those programs can help you to get your video edited out and you can publish it immediately. Step number nine is writing your description and like we had talked about the summary the summary tells you the basic points that you would use so the description is where you actually place a good summary of what the video is about here you'll also place keywords that you use in the tags so that your video can rank a little better and the description is giving what is known as an executive summary of what your video is about. So write something that summarizes what is in the whole video so that if someone is watching your video or someone 
lands on your video, they can be able to know what your video is about by reading a few lines. So start with the title in the description and I'll show you what I do. And as you start with the title in the description, it helps your videos to rank a little better. Then you also include some of the keywords that you placed in the tags in the description and that helps your video to have uh, good keyword density but watch out for what is known as keyword stuffing where you're just placing keywords in the description it doesn't help to do that so only place things in natural language where now someone would be able to understand what you're talking about step number 10 is upload and share we can have done all these things, but if you have OCD about videos, then you'll never upload anything on your channel. The most important thing is to upload and to share your video. So once you have uploaded, I would advise to schedule your video maybe an hour or two hours before you want it to go live. This helps you to make sure that you have uploaded your thumbnail, you have uploaded the description and all that. Everything is ready to go. And as well, because you've created, you need to have created a schedule for your audience. They know that at a particular time, you always upload a video. So it would be bad if you have a schedule of 12 p.m., for instance, and someone comes on your channel and at 10.33, a video is up or at 1.15, a video is up. Of course, if there's a problem, you can always tell your audience that, I'm sorry that this has happened. We will upload at a particular time. But having a particular set time is good because it gives people that TV show kind of feeling because they know that at a particular time, at 12, at 6, at whatever time it is that you have set for your channel, that they can always come to your channel and find that there's a video that is waiting for them. They'll get a notification at midday that you have uploaded on a Thursday, if that is the way that you do it. So once you have uploaded and you've placed your thumbnail, you've done your description, you've put the tags, the next thing that you need to check is that you need to share your video. You share it on WhatsApp, you share it on Facebook, you share it on Twitter, Instagram, wherever you have an audience, share it there. If you have an email list, share it to them immediately because one of the things that happens is if a video gets very good traction in the first 24 hours, it has a high probability of it succeeding in future. So the first 24 hours of a video are really important. They give your video that velocity that is needed in order for it to be suggested to other people if you have people outside your channel who are not even your subscribers coming to your video and watching and commenting and sharing your video in the first 24 hours then it means that that video has a high chance of skyrocketing in the future and even being suggested to more people what youtube does is that once you release a video they usually send it to about five or ten percent of your subscribers immediately the next thing for you to do is to give it that push because if you have a hundred subscribers that means that you probably will have five people who know about your video immediately it is done and those are people who've actually press the bell icon like we keep telling you so if that happens then you need to get your friends and your non-subscribers all to come to the video whether they subscribe or not is not the problem the issue is we need your video to have the most views in the first 24 hours than all the other videos that you've had because that helps YouTube to know and helps YouTube to get enough data about your video and about the quality of your video and the experience that the people are getting on your video so they can be able to take it out to the next batch of subscribers, to people who have watched your videos and suggest it to them as well and tell them, we've seen this video in the first 24 hours, did really well, we think you'll like it because you've liked this person's videos before. Are there any other tips that you'd like to share with us on how to do videos please share them in the comments below if you know this video will help someone please share with them this particular video and i'll see you in the next one where we're talking about tips on growing your youtube channel see you next time